As a matter of fact, one of the primary reasons that we even introduce the idea of momentum and impulse, they are used in collision type of problems where some kind of collision takes place between two objects. Here's what we're going to assume. We're going to assume that when two objects are uh, colliding, let me show you, for example, when momentum would not be conserved. If a car was going and it hit a tree, and the tree has roots into the ground, and then the moment the car hits the tree, is the momentum of the car conserved? The answer is no. Because the car hits the tree, and the tree doesn't just go up and travel with the car. The tree has very strong roots that are firm, and they are fixed to the ground. So the momentum of the car disappears. 100% of the momentum of the car is gone. Okay, So in these kinds of collisions, uh, the momentum of the system is not conserved. Why? Because there's an external force that's provided by the roots. Okay, So remember the equation J is equal to change in momentum. Right? The Newton's law can be expressed this way. The impulse is change in momentum. Now think of the impulse on a system. is equal to change in a momentum of system, uh, an impulse on system. So now, is there a force? So here's our system now. Our system is the, the car and the tree. OK, so consider this as the system here. The momentum of the car and the tree. The momentum of the tree, of course, is zero. The momentum of the car is mv. OK, is there a force that's applying an external impulse on the system? And the answer is yes. The roots are providing an external impulse on the system. So if the impulse on the system, if the impulse on system is uh, not equal to zero, which in this case it's not equal to zero because the roots are causing an external force. Okay, if the uh, if impulse on system is not zero, then the momentum of the system is not conserved. So momentum, therefore, is not conserved in all situations. Okay, same thing with a uh, car going and hitting a wall or, or some kind of pole, OK? So this is, the uh, let's say, some kind of a wall. Or even if I go and hit the wall, I can run right now, go hit the wall, and I'm not going to impart my impulse to the wall because the wall is stuck to the ground, OK? Any time where something is fixed and there's an external force, here the momentum of the car m1, v1, by the time it hits the wall, the final momentum is going to be 0. And there's going to be 100% loss of momentum there. Okay, So uh, the momentum is not conserved in those situations. But in most other situations where the, let's say, something like this. Let's say you have a block and you have another block. And let's say they're sliding on a relatively frictionless surface, maybe small friction or frictionless, something like that. Okay. Now they hit each other. Maybe they're going in the same direction or they're going in the same dire uh, opposite direction or same direction. And so they hit each other and they bounce off each other, right? If the friction is minimum, during their, uh, if, the, if the friction is minimal on the surface, and if the collision happens relatively quickly, uh, then we can assume that the impulse on the system during the collision, I should say this way, if the impulse on the system during the collision 
is approximately zero if during the collision no external force is, is doing work on the system and no external force is applying a considerable impulse on the system, then the momentum of the system can be assumed to be constant. Then the momentum final of system can be assumed to be about the same as the initial momentum of the system. And that's what we're going to assume in most of the problems we solve, actually pretty much all. We're going to assume that collisions are happening and that friction is not doing a considerable impulse on the system, is not imparting a considerable impulse. Therefore, we're going to assume that the momentum of the system before the collision is conserved and the momentum of the system after is equal to the momentum of the system before in, in uh, all collisions. But this is not true about their kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the system can still be lost even if the momentum is conserved. Okay? So therefore, we have two wide spectrums of uh, collisions. We have inelastic collisions. Sometimes they're known as completely inelastic collisions. Uh, perfectly inelastic. But you, sometimes you don't need to put perfectly. Inelastic collision is already understood like that. Yeah, these are ones where you have an object comes hits another object, one object comes, hits another object, and somehow they get stuck to each other. Maybe there's Velcro on them and they get stuck to their Velcro or there's glue or something. So they get stuck and it could be another kind of situation. Could be This could be a south pole of a magnet. This could be the north pole of a magnet and they get stuck like that too. So. Therefore, what happens is, after the collision, they become one object, one system, with some final velocity. So what we're going to assume is that this happens more or less in a frictionless surface, and that the momentum after the collision should be equal to the momentum before. However, the kinetic energy will be lost, okay? So momentum of system, momentum initial total is equal to momentum final total. Momentum initial is M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Momentum final total is going to equal uh, the, the total mass of the system is uh, m1 plus m2 times v final, right? So we have m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to the total mass of the system times v final. And the final velocity is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 over m1 plus m2, OK? So this is, an, uh, this is in an inelastic collision. Now, it can be shown that if that's the case, the kinetic energy is lost. The kinetic energy of the system is what? The kinetic energy uh, initial total is equal to what? Half m1 v1 squared plus the kinetic energy of the second object is half m2 v2 squared. Okay? And then that's the initial kinetic energy of the system. And then the final.